Welcome to this week's episode of Investigation Exodus. We are digging deeper into the story behind the history of the Exodus story. We're taking you back in time to see what really happened. This week I have two guests. The first, a woman who has had to feed her family throughout the journey. The second, one of the elders of Israel who witnessed a miracle that helped save the people. But first, we continue by hearing the next part of the story from our storyteller, Turner Page. Over to you, Turner. Oh, hello. I'm Turner Page. Sorry about that. Hello, I'm Turner Page. Once the Israelites had crossed through the Red Sea, they continued on their journey toward the Promised Land. But if it, it didn't take long for the people to become unhappy on the way. They were grumbling and complaining again, like they had done on the edge of the sea. This time they were hungry. The journey was taking them through mostly desert, and so there was little to eat or drink along the way. They came to Moses to complain about the fact that he was leading them on this horrible journey and that they were having trouble trusting Moses and God to keep them safe. Moses talked to God about it, and God promised to provide bread and meat for the people to eat. God gave the food, but with a condition. Each morning there would be bread, but the people were only to gather enough for one day at a time. In the evening, there would be meat. But again, the people were only to gather what they needed for the day. The bread was manna, and the meat was quail. This food continued to be available for as long as the people needed it on the journey. So the people had food. But again, they came to Moses to complain. Now they were thirsty. They said, God and Moses had brought them out to the desert to let them die without any water. Even though God had already provided bread and meat so they would not go hungry, the people had trouble trusting. So God told Moses to take the elders of Israel with him and go to Horeb. God was going ahead of Moses. At Horeb, Moses was to strike the rock with his staff, the one he used with Pharaoh, and to part the Red Sea. He struck the rock and the water flowed for the people. Once again, God provided what the people needed. Even though the people had trouble trusting that God was with them, that Moses was truly leading where God was calling them to go, God was always with them. God provided what they needed. Learning to trust God was not easy for the Israelites, but God stayed faithful to them. My first guest today is Martha. Martha is one of the mothers in Israel. She runs her household and is responsible for feeding her family every day. Martha, can you tell us what it is like to be on this journey to the Promised Land? What's it been like since leaving Egypt? Well, since we left our homes, it's been full of highs and lows. We start to feel free and then something happens. Just as we left Egypt, we became stuck at the side of the sea. Then, when we managed to get to the other side, we felt truly free. But the difficulties had only just begun. What difficulties are you talking about? Well, when we were wandering in the desert, you know that's a harsh place to live? We had an awful hard time finding food to eat. We had to go and complain to Moses. It seems that we'd only left Egypt, only to come to the desert and starve to death. What happened when you complained to Moses? Moses talked to God. Moses then said God was setting bread and meat, and that's exactly what happened. The next morning, there was this strange, sticky substance sticking to the ground. It was called manna. When we gathered it up, we were able to make bread and other things with it. Then in the evening, many birds, they're called quail, fell from the sky, and we were able to catch them and cook them. And this has continued since always enough food for each day and sometimes we women got together and we created more variety of this. I've always wondered exactly how many ways can you cook man and quail? Well it's been difficult coming up with these new ideas 
My family complained about having to eat the same thing every day again and again. But I think I've managed to get a good number of dishes for them to give variety. And I have quite a list. I have served manna, buns with quail fingers and burgers, toasted manna bread with scrambled quail legs, quail fingers bread and manna, quail wings, quail pot pie, manna, and quail pizza. That's a great one. And sometimes when my kids bring me crickets, I use them to spice it up a little bit and give it a bit of crunch. Sounds like quite a menu. Thank you for sharing with us today, Martha. My next guest is Levi. He's one of the elders of Israel. He went with Moses to the rock at Horeb, and our storyteller was telling us about. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today, Levi. Even after receiving the manna and quail, it seems the people had difficulty trusting God and Moses. This journey has been very difficult. We were stuck at the side of the sea, and God brought us through. But then we were starving. Again, God helped us. But the worst was the first. In the sand, in the heat of the desert, not having water, felt like we were never going to survive. You went with Moses to Horeb. So what really happened there? Are we supposed to actually believe water came out of a rock? Moses had us gather around the rock. Then he prayed to God. Then he used his staff, you know, the one he used on Pharaoh at the side of the sea, and he smacked that rock. It took a moment, then the rock cracked. The water began to flow out onto the sand at our feet. It wasn't just a trickle either, it was a small stream. The water was clear and cold, so refreshing. What did getting this water mean for your people? Did it increase their faith in God? We are more sure that God is with us each time we drink the water. Seeing a miracle like that certainly made me believe. There is still a long way to go to the promised land, but clearly Moses is connected with God, and God is going with us on this journey. Food and water for the journey let us know that God is faithful. We will try to be faithful to God, too. Thank you, Levi. It sounds like you saw something truly amazing and it increased your faith in God. Two more miracles of the Israelite people. What a faithful God they are getting to experience. Until next time, this is Sandy Rhodes for Investigation X.